back to Corey's Corner. This is a brand new series. Um, we're going to be building an API login system with Devise. Uh, so we're on Rails 7.03, Ruby 3.11, uh, standard Rails gem file. And uh, basically, what I want to do with this is I'm going to be making an API application. It's going to connect to my front end on Flutter. Flutter is a, a cross-platform application by Google written in the dark language for building mobile apps. So basically our mobile app is going to be connecting to our Rails server um, and we are going to be in this series building in, building out rather, the uh, login functionality. And the reason why I'm not doing this all from scratch, I could, but um, it's just a lot easier to use Devise. Devise will already have a bunch of built-in methods for us. But um, yeah, so the basic overview is that we're gonna have their users, when a user logs in, they're gonna get an authentication token. That token is gonna be sent back to the mobile app. Once the mobile app makes any sort of request, it'll have to send that token over. That token will have to be validated by our server. And if the token's valid, then the user has the permission to perform various actions. If that sounds confusing, it's because it probably is. Um, no. You'll, you'll see what I mean when we get further on. This is going to be the start of my Fluttering on Rails series. So, the first thing that we need to do is we need to install the device gem. And just run bundle. Boom, boom, boom. All right, we got device. Clear this, Rails. G device install. I should be able to do this in my sleep by now. We'll do Rails G device. We'll call it user. And let me see what our model gives us. Our migrations, rather. Let me full screen this for you. Generate users. All right, so we got our email. We got our encrypted password. Um, just gonna leave all this. All right, so we are going to use a web token, commonly referred to usually as a JSON web token. So we're gonna create a, another another um, migration to store the web token. I could add it in here, but I don't want to. So we'll just do Rails D migration, add web token. We'll just call it token, add token. Web is kind of redundant because everything is on the web. Add token to device, to, uh, add token to users. Just have token. That'll be a string. Let me make sure that's all right before we run our migrations. Yep. All right. So we're on Rails DB migrate. Oh. Um, I want to send. I want to make the token default to nil. Default nil. Eh, whatever, we'll worry about that later. All right, so we've got our basic user model. Now we want to, I don't know why my indexing part is paused. Uh, whatever, sometimes these large text editors, I mean, they're great and all, but uh, they're almost too heavy duty, but whatever. So we'll X out of this, we'll X out of this, um, all right. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to outline our basic controllers namespace. So we're going to have a user's controller and then a session's controller. And these are both going to be namespaced under the API namespace, API v1. So we'll do Rails G controller API slash v1 slash users. We'll do Rails G controller 
API slash v1 slash sessions. We're gonna try to keep this as in line or as close to the normal uh, device um, nomenclature. So if we open up our controllers file, we see we have API v1 and I accidentally made views for those. So just delete that. And then we're going to namespace these controllers um, to our routes. And all this code I'm going to upload on Git. I usually don't do that because Flutter and Rails are both huge projects. We're gonna have to do that for you. So we do namespace, API do, uh, one do, and this is where our controllers will live. So we have, um, let's start off with the sessions controller. So we can do get backslash sessions slash new comma two sessions hashtag new and then we can do actually we'll do post sessions then sessions hashtag create we can do delete slash sessions two sessions hashtag destroy and we can do post slash users to users hashtag create. And we're gonna have no new action because uh, the, the new page technically will be on the front end of our mobile application. Um, now if I run rake, oh sorry, rails, routes, and I grep for API, excuse me, holy crap. I don't know what that was about. Let's see, I have these. So now we need to add our controller actions. But first, rather than inheriting from application controller, uh, we are going to inherit from action controllers, API module. Um, and basically what this does is it turns off some protections. So normally when we, for example, um, just off the top of my head, normally when we submit a form, we have a, an authenticity token, but because we are in an API and we're using a web token, we can turn that authenticity token off, as well as a bunch of other stuff by making our controller inherit from action controller API. And before I forget, we'll do this in the users controller. So we'll do action controller API. So we need to define a new method and then a destroy method. Um, and then users. So at user to a user dot new user params uh, if at user dot save render at user dot two json comma status two hundred actually we'll do it like this accepted and then we will private def user params params dot permit Wait, params. Oh yeah, it's params. Require them. Params. Require user. Permit email. Well, it's got to be a list, so we'll do percent i email password password confirmation. So right here, we are creating a user. Um, and then if our user does not save else, render JSON status and plus it. And 
see. Um, my text editor is not working right now. It's kind of throwing me off. I apologize for that. But anyway, we've gotten pretty far. I am doing this off the rip. Thank you very much. But um, so yeah, we're basically going to create our user. So let me write a note because in the next episode, what we're, we're going to do is we are going to create a model level method to generate the token. And we're also going to need to handle errors in the new action. All right. So basically, to create an API, you need to um, create a login API. You need to install the device gem, namespace your controllers, create your controller's actions, so on and so forth. Um, yeah, we've gotten pretty far so far, but we will do this stuff in the next action. We need to work on the Flutter end of the app, which is kind of a pain, but we're going to work on the Flutter end of the app so we can actually live test our API. We're going to be using the render uh, JSON method, and we are going to um, do a bunch of cool stuff. But anyway, thank you for watching. This has been Corey's Corner. I will see you in the next episode. Be sure to subscribe to my podcast.